Uh, good morning. Uh, special thanks to the organizers, Professor Saget Ghosh, Professor Saurabh Datta, and Professor Dev. And I'm coming from the Rurki. We have a 45 degree temperature there, and here very pleasant weather here. So, and we are also celebrating in Rurki 175 year, and uh, it's going on. And uh, in November, we are also organizing a very big conference in our campus. So hopefully, few of you will be also be there again. So I'm Ajay Vasan, and uh, I'm going to give a talk, quantum computers, physical realization. Till now, all things were going with the hot atoms. Now I'm coming to the cold atoms. And uh, I will show what are my plans in the coming, because we have not done so far in between lab by also closed for a long time. So what I'm going to do, so I will discuss with you people. So this is my lab. We have already set up and uh, we have trapped the atom also here and in this glass cell and uh, rhodium coal atoms and this happened around two and a half years back. And after that, not much progress. And we also, these are images taken in the lab and we reached the temperature you now 88 point micro Kelvin. Nowadays, the students are working on the setup to go get better and better. And in the coming years, coming few months, I'm going to get this new system from the cold quanta. We are in process. Laser is almost ordering today. And we are also getting some new system because we don't need a background atoms when we are working with the quantum gates. So that type of system we are getting. And uh, we have to also prepare the network states. So, so far in this two, three groups are main group in the, around the world. So they are getting uh, this using the 480 nanometer I'm showing here. This is the Safman group in Wisconsin University. And, uh, then another laser we are using 420 and plus 1013. This is a Lukin group in Howard Dynasty. So they have a different approach. And these both, both group have shown the uh, quantum gates recently. They have publication. They have shown the quantum Fourier transform. And also they have shown error correction in the Lukin group. So they have reached so far from us. And we are still on the first stage. And they are also making a Raman laser because we have also working on this setup. So we are following this Lukin group. So they are make what they are doing to make the qubits in the rhodium ground state, say zero and one. So they have a hundred percent accuracy. They put the atom from here to here and here here. Just put on pulse. The atom from the ground state will come. Let us say from zero to state will come to one. And one to it will come zero. The zero and one basically they are the hyperfine state of the rhodium ground state. So Joey has already explained the this rhodium atom, same thing. And uh, one of the students working on this, and we are now getting this tapered amplifier. We are also in process of ordering all these things. So maybe by the end of this year, we should make it. And uh, now I'm coming, yeah, how this, from quantum optics, we have reached to the quantum computing, how this connection is there. That connection I'm going to discuss here. So we all know about the atom. If this, uh, I'm just showing here, uh, and this is the electromagnetic field. I am taking the classical field and the quantized atom. So between light and field, this atom and field when interact. So when we pass the light from the glass cell, simple hot atoms or vapors are there, then pass it. So we can see what is this light. And when all these atoms, they are emitting the photon, if we measure them. So when we see this photo detector, we are seeing the transmission. If we are scanning our light or if we, see these photons, basically we are again seeing the same thing. This in, we have reversed it. So we are seeing the intensity. Basically two level atom, simple. Okay, so question comes, what governs the interaction of photon with the two level atoms? And what is the time evolution of these two states? And what are the properties of these two states? So simple thing. I mean, as I said, we are taking the classical plane wave and quantize atom, quantum mechanically. So one more thing we are considering if this atom size is very small compared to the wavelength, whatever we are using, let us say I'm using rubidium, 70 nanometer. So this is a almost 0.5 nanometer and it's very big. So basically what happened we are considering 
electric field is uniform over the size of the atom. The next thing comes, we are talking that will comes when we do the quantum optics, omega. This is the basically Rabi frequency. It shows the strength of the interaction. Basically, mu is the dipole moment uh, between these two states, and E is the electric field. It shows the strength. This is the Rabi frequency. And <clears throat> other things comes when we are going in the rotating wave approximation, so we can write what is Hamiltonian of the system. It's become very simplified. I'm not going all the details. So ultimately depend upon the detuning of the atom and the light, which you can see coming here, and then Rabi frequency. And when we solve this Hamiltonian, we get the eigenvalues, we can get the eigenvector also. So basically, when this right is red detuned, so this level shifts. We call it star shifts. So it's a very simple definition in the quantum optics. So what I'm showing next thing, I'm just taking simple two level, current attraction of atom and light. So this is a, I'm taking the, this is a ground state. This is a excited state. I'm writing the wave function, very time dependent. And I can connect, suppose initially I have a, this is my probability of finding in the time T not at the ground state, in the excited state. And then we apply the pulse, then this is a, I'm going to, it will change. It will change in all dependent on the, this unitary matrix. What is this unitary matrix? If we solve it, it takes some time. It is time consuming, we will end up here. <clears throat> so you can see it depends upon the initial time T naught, then later on T, some delta function that is detuning, some omega prime is coming basically, basically this is generalized frequency. <clears throat> and it depends upon T minus T naught, that's I'm saying the unitary matrix, depend upon this T minus T naught. And I can simplify this unitary matrix more, if I setting this parameter, delta is equal to zero, initial time T naught is equal to zero, we'll end up here, this unitary matrix, okay? And then I'm just showing this some rise frequency, no connection here, but I haven't, just showing even delta was zero, so all the atoms are going from the ground state to the upper state. When we are introducing some delta, let us say there, the atom doesn't go up to the full, not, uh, this one is not one, basically, probability of finding the upper state, it will go somewhere and keep on oscillating up and down. And right now I'm not considering any spontaneous emission here, a simple system. So I'm going to connect this unitary matrix with the quantum gates. So how it will come the quantum gates, that thing I'm showing here. We now examine the phase evolution of the quantum state under the Ravi oscillation. I'm considering, let us apply one two pi pulse. When omega t is equal to two pi pulse, when I apply this matrix, whatever I was showing unitary matrix, sim simplified like this. This become minus one, this become minus one. And basically, if I apply this unitary matrix on the initial wave function, so we will end up minus phi. Some phase difference has come here. But let us say, I'm saying e to the power i pi. So what is the meaning of this? Suppose my atom is here and I apply one two pi pulse. If I apply two pi pulse, it goes from here and will come back. And if, I, let us say state is here, I'm applying the same pulse and uh, it will go up, it will come back. Difference between these two things is that it will accumulate some phase here, pi. In this case, a pi phase will come here in this, here in the state. And here, no phase will change here. So these things comes repeatedly in the, when we are doing this quantum gate things. And uh, in the quantum, uh, when we study the Nelson Chuang book, there, there are three gates. Uh, this uh, rotation matrices basically, Rx theta, Ry theta, Rz. So this, there also looks like same, whatever unitary matrix I have shown. And these are, this three rotation matrix can be converted to the X gate, pi, Y gate, and Z gate by just applying this theta is equal to minus pi. If I keep it there, so this X, Y, Z comes, the simplified things. So what I'm doing here, so this is the, just now I showed the, previous slide, all this R S theta, R Y theta gate. And this is my unitary matrix that I showed the before this. 
So now from this unitary matrix, we have to get these gates. So what we are going to do it to so put this omega is equal to basically we put this t basically is equal to theta over omega. It depend upon my Ravi frequency. We know see what is Ravi frequency. So we are going to set the time by calculating the Ravi frequency. What is the value of the t? Then substitute here, and then whatever this unitary matrix become like this. And this is just nothing. This is R x theta. Just simplify whatever we were doing in the two-level atom. It's automatically is giving them rotation matrix, rotation with respect to the x-axis that is coming here. Now, if I substitute the value of certain let us say pi, and I am getting this minus i x. This is a, we don't worry it because it's just a global phase there in the quantum computing. So I am just getting in a two-level atom how to make the x gate. This is a procedure. Now suppose I want to get R y theta. So in that case, we'll putting the this value of imaginary value. This we can also do it just putting by the e on there and substitute the value of t equal to theta over omega. We will end up here. And this is nothing. This is this matrix will come. I will show you and uh, substitute the value R y theta. And here, again here, one i is coming here. I, ju I just uh, said on the previous slide is a global phase. So we are getting the y matrix. And uh, <clears throat> this, as we have got the Rx, Ry, this is my typo mistake, this should be the Y. Nathan Chong is a quantum company, he is not talking about all these things. Nathan Chong is only talking about rotation matrices, but I am talking how to get in the two level atom. All depend upon the, that unitary matrix. Because for other atom, you need it. Actually, I started with the rubidium. And other atoms, you need a lot of layers. Pandey is doing, Uma Gandhi is doing. So I have a setup with this. So that's easy to get it. Yeah, also, there are issues with uh, like you, people have tried with cesium. It turns out rubidium, when people want to do, for example, dipole dipole things. The molecular potentials come into play and it's much cleaner system to work with rubidium. <laughs> yeah. And but in the if they start working with read work systems anyway, they amplify that hey, dipole moment to like Lugan group has continuously publishing for last four years only on rubidium. So far, they know issue. Easy, easiest, easiest atom to handle it. Okay, I will come. So here, just now, I'm giving the flavor how we are making the quantum gates using the simple two-level atom. This idea I have given here, and uh, if just I'm just showing even uh, in the National Chong book, there's a problem. Problem is in the book. 4.4 problem key, how to show the Hedam art gate using the Rx RJ rotation. So I'm just giving the idea with the letter, how to make the Hedam art gate. So if we apply Hedam art on zero, it comes zero plus one divided by square root that state comes. So basically I'm showing on the block sphere show you, shown by the Joey. So basically first I'm showing this RJ pi by two, then we have to apply this, then we have to apply it. So if I apply, so we are rotating by pi by two, then it will the same direction, basically nothing, no change. When we apply Rx pi by two, it means with respect to X, we have to do it minus direction. So this state will from come into this, basically. Basically we have come from here to here. And then again, apply Rz pi by two. In this case, this has come here, we are coming here. So basically we reach here. This is nothing, this point is cat zero plus cat one divided by square root two. So we just, when we apply on this, this is coming. This is one way of making the Hadam art gate. So now again, I'm talking about this thing two photon Raman transition. So here, this is three level atom. So we, we call this technique adiabatic elimination of the third level. My qubits will be only this and this, and or we, can, we, call, we call also slaving the, the intermediate level. 
So this again, we, we apply this. I'm applying here. We, I'm taking theory of the system. I'm not going all mathematics. We solve this thing again. We end up with this type of matrix. We are getting the unitary matrix. So as I said, if we have to, we are making a Raman layer. So we will send the atom from here to here or here to here with the condition it is delta one and this delta, this should be delta two, I think, type of mistake. This should be much, much greater than omega one and omega two, minus omega one and omega two. Then we can eliminate the, this third equation come there. We'll end up again with this unitary matrix and this unitary matrix, just now I was discussing when we take this condition again, this rotation matrix is coming. So by just taking three level system, I will end up with the two levels unitary matrix that is nothing. Again, this is a quantum rotation matrix. So we can make some quant again quantum gate. So this is some global phase shift I'm talking. Here is the rotation about an equatorial axis as I discussed already. And this is some single qubit phase gate. So, so it has been already uh, group, many groups have done it. And, Actually, uh, when we are taking uh, this phase, things are coming. Basically, when finally, these are phase terms I'm talking. Also, also, while speaking about the block spheres, when you said so, the resistance of uh, uh, pulses, pulses we have to apply, yeah. Then I'm when we are reaching with though, this, uh, whenever this phase that doesn't matter much because we are taking the square when you cancel out the point. Like, this is just a simple phase. I, I will take doc. Finally, uh, whatever theoretically and exponential measurements are totally different. Matrices are coming different. I will show you. Hmm. Uh, right can you, now, can you, that is different. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, can you use the mic? Because actually the online participants cannot hear the question. Oh, that yeah. is a different issue. I, mean, I have not come to there. Till now. Uh, people are working, but they want equal shift, then that, that, that case comes. But right now I'm talking, that is simple two-level system. Here we don't need a magic wavelength, all these things. This here, just using, for example, uh, looking group, they are using just 795 nanometers. But magic wavelength, you're talking when we need equal stark yeah. shift in the ground level and upper level. So that overall, there will be no change in the wavelength between that. Your circuit will not be correct, isn't it? It will not get that. The fertility will be anyway. Just I'm I'm just showing you what people have done so far, how they are doing. So, what because is your excited state? Hyperfine level. This is a this is a ground hyperfine levels. Let us say this is the uh, f equal to one, f equal to two. I'm taking the GS level, and because we apply the little magnetic field, so we remove the degeneracy. And this is the so let us say some p state instead of uh, like considering hyperfine level. If you consider one of the like 5p state. 5s to 5. No, no, keep it to be generally taking on the ground state. So then magic wavelengths are already known for that. Uh, yeah, that is known, Noema. That is known, but I'm saying here we are not using. Here is just a simple 795 nanometer uh, P half state because that we don't need here. This is just I'm talking. It's a simple three level and eliminating this intermediate level. I'm just connecting how the quantum gates are well, basically rotation matrix coming that can be used to make quantum gates. So here also, when we have a lambda type of system, again, we can find the unitary matrix. Again, this is the end up, uh, we solve it. So basically here I'm talking about the network state they are taking, previously I was taking uh, CG and C, they were in the ground state, now I have reached the network state. And uh, there, they have also got the unitary matrix, put the right values. We have again the rotation matrix. So we can also make the gates between this state and this state. And uh, Ridwag atom already spoken by Professor Ashok Mahapatra. So in this case, we are putting the atom in a higher state. And basically, whenever n is more than 20, we are in Ridwag state. But in the uh, last uh, one decade, a lot of work is going on this thing. So I just explain a little bit uh, in hydrogen and light atom, we already know. So I come to the next slide. So main thing here, this I have taken from this book and this from paper, all this data. The main thing is here, this radiative lifetime, when we excite the atom, let us say 70 plus state, the lifetime increase. Say more, you know, in microseconds. 
and also other thing important is here the polarity is very high and this van der Waal interaction coefficient is very high these three things are very important in making the and uh, double double interactions coming due to this here uh, parameter and uh, here i'm just showing the uh, some upper state the, the, this redox states here in the atom of the rubidium atom so bohr state size become also very large and if we are a, as i said if then if we have a, and let us say more than 60 if we have 100 microsecond lifetime here of the atom because if we are using p state that is in a nanosecond lifetime we cannot do any quantum computing type of work there and uh, then large dipole elements if we are seeing between if we from uh, between l uh, and between the other state and prime so here i am showing here basically between this dipole moment if we measure it this is also very high number so large dipole dipole interaction so other thing i have taken from this bowes lecture on the website last year he was giving somewhere so he has taken the dipole dipole interaction between the two atoms and we already studied this equation many times and uh, when we have a two atoms we have to write the basis in that space so we are taking this tensor product of these states and uh, he has solved uh, basically what happened either both atom will be in the ground gg or one atom will be g or e or other atom will be e or g or both atom in the upper state so then those who are in the same level so we, we call it resonant and those who are far away we call off resonant from gg to e we cannot excite in one shot so they are off resonant so it has been solved and when with the condition given van der waal condition if for this uh, resonant case this coming uh, shift the energy of this order and when it resonant when g as a g or eg if we solve it it's coming over c3 over by r cube so this is now well known you will find in many books so how we are using it basically when we have a single atom we can excite the atom from ground to redox state but thing comes little uh, complicate when let us say one of the two atoms when we have set either this one or this one we excite and we want to excite both atom in the rr state then we cannot excite them so this phenomena whole phenomena is known as blockade so basically what happened when one level is in the r level one atom in the r level other atoms level shift i will show on the next slide so basically whatever plan yeah, I have a people are already doing it. They are bringing two atoms together. And this is bit from five to seven, eight micrometer. So what happened, this is, a, I have taken the D produced from the segment paper. Even atoms, we already know the atom in the ground state. Then they have a one over R6, this is a vendor wall interaction. Then in the dipole, dipole, the magnetic dipole interaction, that's also very small. When we have an atom in the redwork state, very high state, then dipole dipole interaction increase and the vendor wall interaction also more. The difference is from here to here is 12 order of magnitude. So why people are interested in the atom trap? Because in the ion trapping, we cannot remove the interaction because atoms are ions, always interaction will be there. But in the atoms, we can switch off and switch on the interaction. When I have atom in the redwork state, then interaction will happen. When atom is not in the river state, then interaction will not take place. So that is a, one of the main thing. A lot of work is going on this thing. So they think uh, scientists around the world, they are thinking they can make more clean system uh, using the atom for this quantum computing. And uh, so just now I was talking about the uh, Rydberg blockade. So suppose I'm showing here two atoms. So if I excite one atom here, then what happened? Other level automatically. I mean, I cannot excite this atom to here. And when this happens, we call it entanglement happen between the two atoms because this is not allowing this excite excitation when done it. This is not allowing to excite this atom. And this is a phenomena people are using to make the quantum gates. So I am showing here if, if this atom is excited here, it's not going. So we can do like this, you trap the atom here, excite it around all this, there will be some volume. In that, within that volume, atom will not excite. 
or it can be shown in other way if we are using the blue dutin beam the atoms are trapped here here also if these atoms are around but suppose we excite this atom so all atom around it they are not going to be excited so we can make some entanglement between these and uh, i am just showing the results of some other groups uh, published in uh, physics today they are showing you atoms are trapping in a different different ways even two dimensional three dimensional this is the bowes group they they are doing experiment in very unique way they are putting all this their optics and everything within the uh, chamber and they have made the all trapped atom in a one plane they have shown different different shapes even they have just forming the in the beam they are making all type of pattern of the with the atoms and this is the one of the this uh, 2019 paper you can see here in the safman group they have put the two amps cross to each other and similar here also and you see carefully 1038 nanometer beam going from here 459 going from here and how nicely overlapping has been done on each side it means each atom is getting these these two beam this is art of alignment to get so we have to go up to not only all laser has to be in the right frequency we have to do the right matching also so they have reached up to that precision so that's why recently they have published one paper on this quantum fourier transform applied with the cold trapped atom and uh, here i'm also showing one of their this uh, paper sapman group so we are also planning our future plan is like this we will be trapping all the atoms in a one line group and we will excite the atom this thing with using the blue layer this one 480 nanometer and we are planning to make some quantum gates like this this is our future plan so i'm just showing few uh, still 3 minutes are there so i'm just showing simple example think can we uh, we would like to take some questions then uh, please up or, or... but this is my last slide yes bas well, one more this thing but after we'll stop this is a thin odd gate i'm showing and uh, we when we apply here when control is one then it flip okay so similarly control jet gate so when one will be here the jet will be applied so how the things are going on here i have summarized in the next slide suppose i take two atom control and target suppose i will just one sequence of pulse one three sequence of pulse will i will apply and i will show how the control jet not is coming here so this is my i am initially my atom is 0 0 so when i apply this pulse so nothing will happen then uh, when i am applying this pulse again nothing will happen because atom is here already so step 2 in the step 3 i am again applying uh, one this pulse on the front here because atom is not there nothing will come here the whole situation it was like this so i will be presenting whole this data something like this e 0 0 i applied uh, initially be 0 0 was applied and output is 0 0 now i am again and now let us put the atom here again this is 0 nothing will happen i am applying same sequence of pulse so because now atom is here it's going up come back to 2 pi five phase will come there so here i am showing that nothing will happen to so finally this minus 0 one is coming then again if i take the atom here then again minus will come here or in the last stage suppose i put all that both the atom in one one so now this atom will excite there and uh, this is clearly going to shift as i said but due to blockage the ship this atom will not excite now then finally i will bring this atom back so whatever result comes here this comes like this and this is just whatever we get in the this is theoretical result and this is experimental result change is there you are not getting the same thing so i end up here now any question i maybe we'll take only one question because we are so in the c not gate you just showed okay so where is the flipping uh, if you had one so i i was talking about the control jet gate not c not gate after that you have to make that Before was that control jet c not gate isn't it control jet gate for that we only i showed uh, i uh, c not gate so i i did not discuss here but i am saying in the that was c not gate slide mm. yes 
So you had shown in the in the optic, atomic level. Ah, uh, atomic level. Yeah. That was our control jet gate. Oh, C not gate is not. I did not demonstrate it, but people have already done it. You are having C not gate, uh, C jet gate using Hadamard operation. You can get C not. It's very easy. well known. Okay. You don't have to do anything. You have to just apply to Hadamard gate. That is equal to C not gate. No, no, no. We had needed two atom, trapped atom. Hmm. 